All right, so in this video, I'm going to be going over the key concepts in chapter seven, semi distributions. And since this is a review, I'm going to try to keep it quick and short because you're probably cramming up for a test. So, on um, sampling distributions, the first um, thing you have to know is the vocab words, not that many, but just a few. So, know what a parameter is and know what a statistic is. So, parameter versus a statistic. Statistics refer to. Um, Samples. And, and parameters, we're talking about the population. So remember, the population is the entire group that you want to study. So like, for example, maybe you want to figure out what percent of high school students in the US um, smoke or try weed before um, graduating. Um, you're not going to be able to you know, survey every single and study every single high school student in the U.S. because that will take forever. It's a waste of time. It's not real realistic. So you would take a sample of some of them. Now, um, when we're talking about parameters dealing with the population, the true values of the mean, we use mu. So true mean, mu, and true proportion proportion, we use P, let's put this in red, mu and P, we like to use the Greek letters. Now for st samples, for statistics we use X bar, and for purport, sample proportion we use P hat. So X bars refer to samples, or X bar and P hat refer to samples, sample mean, Sample proportions. Now, um, <clears throat> now, so using this example again, that you're saying that you want to figure out what proportion of high school students try weed before graduating. There's only one true value of the proportion. Let's say maybe it's um, 40%. So the true proportion is 0 0.40. There's only one true um, value. Um, and there's only one value, in other words. Now, when it comes to statistics, there could be thousands and thousands because the statistics will vary based on who you sample and based on how big the groups are. So like if you'd say you would take a group of, let's say, 1,000 students, n equals 1,000, maybe for this 1,000 students, you get p hat to be 0. 0.42. And maybe you take an, a different sample and maybe across the country of like another of 500 students and you get p hat to be like 0.39 and so forth now um it depends again on the sample size and depends on the group however we want to um, um fix one of those values to be the same when we're talking about sampling distributions now let's say, um, let's go over here. Let's say our population large N is, um, let's say you have 500,000 students in the population. Now you're not gonna be able to, to um, sample and, and you know, interview or whatever, grab data from all half a million students. So you take samples of size 1,000, let's say. And you take one sample, let's say in each state, that's, so your first state of a thousand students, your sample has a sample proportion of 0.44. You take another thousand from a different state and you get a sample proportion of 0.41 and so forth. Now this is called a sampling distribution of this sample statistic because again, you're gonna get different values, but there's gonna be, a, the, the key thing that you wanna mix up is that for each distribution, for each sample size is your different sampling distribution. So you have one sampling distribution where N is 1000, da, da, da. but if you were to say, okay, I'm gonna take samples of size, let's say 2000, you're gonna be talking about a whole different sampling distribution. Um, 
that's a key thing. And that's where it gets really confusing. But let's do some practice problems. That's the best way to understand this stuff. So let's look at this one. We have the principal of a large high school is concerned about the number of absences for students at his school. To investigate, he prints, well, let's see. <clears throat> he prints a list showing the number of absences during the last month for each of the 2,500 students at school. For his population of students, the distribution of absences last month is skewed to the right with a mean of 1.1 and a standard deviation of 1.4. Suppose that a random sample of 50 students is selected from the list printed by the principal and the sample mean number of absences is, collect, is calculated. What is the shape of the sample distribution of the sample mean? Explain. Oh, here's paper, by the way. Hey, guys. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's do this calculation. Let's fast forward here. Okay, so the, the population for each of the 20, population is, is size 2,500, so large n is 2,500, has a mean or has a mu. Population mean of 1.1 and standard deviation of 1.4. Now, it says you get a, you get a sam random sample of 50 students. So small n in this case is going to be 50. And it's asking for um, the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Now, even though the population is skewed to the right, I say skewed to the right, right? If the population is skewed, skewed to the right, so it means it's going to be looking like this, tailing off to the like that. Because of the central limit theorem, since your sample is at least 30, since n is greater than or equal to 30, we can say that the distribution is approximately normal because again n is 50 because so 50 is greater than or equal to 30. Sampling distribution of sample mean is approximately normal. Make sure you say approximately. They're pretty strict, and some professors are dicks about it, and some of the graders are. So just make sure you say that because they will usually mark it down if you don't, because um, it's not exactly normal. Okay, part B. What are the mean and standard deviation of assembly distribution of a sample mean? All right, so we just use this calculation formula. Now the mean is a sample mean is an unbiased estimator. So then, the so the sample the sample the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar. So remember mu sub x bar is going to be one point one unbiased estimator. I don't, I don't think you have to write it. It doesn't say why, but it's an unbiased estimator. Let me just put it that anyway. Unbiased estimator, just in case. And the standard deviation, we can use the formula because we're taking less than 10% of the population. So since 50 is less than or equal to 1 tenth of n or 1 tenth of 2,500, which is 250. So since we were taking, since our sample is less than 10% of the population, we can use the formula that we're given in our formula sheet. So let's bust it out. All right, so it says sigma over square root of n. So do, do, do. sigma over the square root of n, right? I say n or x, n, it's n. Ooh. Sampling distribution over sample mean, x bar is gonna be this, which is 1.4 over square root of uh, 2,500. And down low. And we will get, oh, come on, 1.4. Nice. Wait, what? No, no, no or sorry, not 2,500. Um, 550, third of N. Woo, that was close. 
was checking to see if you guys were gonna catch that. So recalculating one four divided by the square root of 50. 0.197 or 0.198, we could say. They're not strict. They don't really care about the rounding, so don't worry about that. Not that special. 0.198. Now, part C, what is the probability that the mean number of abstinence in a random sample of 50 students is less than 1? All right. Okay, so let's just do your calculation. You know this, baby? This is hard, man. Don't worry. It's, you got it. You can do this, right? So... The probability, let's go. The probability that, hey guys, the mean number of references in a random sample. So x bar is less than one, it says. Mean number of references. Okay, so then now we just use. The, these parameters because we have this. The, um, so let's just draw. Let, let me draw my normal. Or let me just. Actually, no, I should probably show Because it's not normal. It's actually a skewed curve. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. In the random sample of 50 students. So, yeah, net, we, we are talking about normal distribution because we're talking about the sampling distribution. So we have a normal curve with mean 1.1, right? And standard deviation point. One nine eight, and so what we do is we're just trying to find since one point one is one point one is going to be like in the middle, right? Right through that, and so then one is going to be somewhere over here. We're trying to find this area, and so we can just go normal CDF. Going back to my calculator. Remember the command normal. Oh, normal. I'm going to erase that normal. CDF. Let me erase that too. Lower bound. So if you have the old school one like me, the syntax would just be parentheses, lower bound, so like negative a billion. Comma upper bound, which is going to be just one, and you could go ahead and even enter the mean and standard deviation. So the mean is then going to be um, one point one, comma point one nine eight, and it'll give you a, about point three one point about point three one. Point this is point three zero oh, six seven six. Right. These are commas, by the way. Ooh. Oh man, a taller wife. <clears throat> All right, I'm um, almost done. All right, so then uh, because the populate part D, po because the population distribution is skewed, the, the principal is considering using the medium number of absences last month instead of the mean number of absences to summarize the distribution. Describe how the principal could use the simulation to estimate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample median for random samples for random samples of size 50. Okay, so don't, <clears throat> don't overthink this. When you're doing simulations, you just want to do a lot of them. So you're going to basically do many, 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 many random samples of 50. And for each one, calculate the sample medium, medium. And then calculate the standard deviation of those sample medians. And here we go. Take many, take many, many random samples of size 50, then calculate the sample median for each sample, and then calculate the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample medians. So just same thing as usual. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comments section and make sure you subscribe and I'll make sure to keep on cranking out more videos and doing, doing my best to help you guys out. See you guys. Say bye, baby. Bye, guys. Thanks. All right. Have fun, guys. See you later.